No one likes Gen Z. Surprising, ain't it? Imagine you're walking down a long dirt road. It's the same path your parents have traveled and they love telling you about how much easier the journey is today and that all you need to do is keep walking. The milestones stretch out in front of you, landmarks that your parents reached as part of their journey. But as the years go by and the road stretches out, they just seem further and further away. Sometimes a I don't know. My parents aren't telling me how much easier the road is. The only thing that they mention and also what my grandparents used to mention constantly is the fact that oh look at how lucky you are you go to school and you don't need to uh, no don't need to go 20 miles in the snow every single day on foot it's so much better for you because of that you don't need to cross the river on a pontoon no longer oh it's so much but yeah is it though I mean, it kind of technically is, yeah, we now have transportation, public transportation, you know, private cars and whatnot, but, I mean, everything else is a lot worse than that, honestly. Storm blows in and you have to wait for it to pass, or the road turns to mud and it feels like you're trudging through a swamp. Eventually you look up and you realize that you've gotten no further than you were a day, a month, or a year ago. There's a very good reason Gen Z is the most apathetic, cynical, and detached generation in living history. Just the I think they're just spoiled, stupid, and don't understand anything. Look at the hand they've been dealt. It's so much harder today to find a meaningful relationship, buy a home, start a family, get true, a good job, true, and generally live your life. With each wrong on the ladder. No, actually, no, I don't agree about the job. Finding a good job now is easier, e easier than ever, honestly, if you're competent. Competent people getting jobs, getting extremely good jobs is so easy nowadays. Because the reality is, people are really incompetent nowadays. Uh, everyone who... I am currently 30. I don't know which generation that makes me. I don't care, honestly. But everyone be, uh, below me, uh, newer people, younger people, they are significantly more stupid. They have significantly less understanding and basic skills. So, you know. It's not actually hard to find a job because your competition at this point is like super bad and stupid. So if you're not super stupid and super bad and super inept and super annoying, you're probably having a very, very easy time finding a good job getting further apart, you can't blame people for doubting if the climb is worth it. Participation in society used to be based on an underlying deal. If you paid attention at school, worked hard, and treated people with respect, eventually everything would fall into place. Society had set strong- Ooh, this is a very much American perspective. Oof. Now, you need to understand something, my dear fellow, uh, fellow Americans. I'm not American, by the way. But uh, I'm, I'm going to explain how much of a joke the American education system is, and I doubt you honestly need me to explain, but here, here we go. In the rest of the world, in Europe, where we have competent people, where, where we have decent society and society boundaries and whatnot, do you know what is the uh, finishing rate of college? Even for some of the most easiest professions that require college graduation. It is roughly 33%. One in three people will f uh, will finish college. And the harder the degree, the harder it's going to be. For example, I am a, uh, I am bi uh, I have finished business logistics. That had roughly a 20-25% finishing rate. And that's intended. You see, the school is not actually that hard. It just throws a lot of things at you and makes people uh, makes people experience what it is under pressure and, you know, them uh, adapting and acclimatizing and doing things like that. Like, trust me, you can finish school even in, uh, in, the, in these circumstances just by asking to be put in a p passing grade because you're stupid. You can literally do that and it sometimes still works. And you know what's the pass, uh, what's the college pass rate in America currently? Almost 70%. That is ridiculous. That means that almost anyone who goes in gets passed as long as, I don't even know, as long as they just don't die during the semester or something like that. It is absolutely crazy. America has no experts because college is a joke. P uh, college is supposed to be uh, uh, hard. It's supposed to be a filter for f people who prove themselves capable and for people who prove themselves incapable of passing it because of a var variety of reasons. But in America, that's gone. College is currently daycare. 
the equivalent of daycare. And you know what's even the most scariest thing? A hard professions like nurses, doctors, engineers, people who are very much directly responsible for other people not dying. The average rate of success for do uh, those professions in colleges should be roughly 10-ish percent. In America, they do not reveal the, per uh, the percent that graduate from it, which means that it's significantly higher than 10% anyway. And that's insane. That means that you... I understand one thing. Okay, you, you, America is letting, uh, letting through incompetent people who are going to be managers and whatnot. But it's a completely different thing putting, in, uh, putting through incompetent people that are going to be doctors and engineers and design bridges and whatnot. That is a completely different thing. And America is doing that at record speeds. Probably you have, uh, maybe you have heard about this, but there was this one article about a full year of med students that were black, literally only black. It was only, if, uh, it was the, some kind of school only got a full year of black students. And do you know how many of them finished being doctors? A hundred percent. These people are going to unironically go practice medicine and kill people because of their incompetence. Because there is no world where 100% of people who apply to be doctors actually finish to be doctors. That is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. Structures which guaranteed that the people who followed the rules would actually get something out of it. A home, a family, a purpose. Something which maybe added meaning to their lives. But over the past few decades, all of that was systematically stripped away. It was the lie we were told growing up. Everyone has to grow up. But the breaking of that illusion has been particularly traumatic to Gen Z. As children we were told we could do anything. And that the world was a place where all of this would come true. Well, Gen Z honestly was kind of the first generation that was completely pandered to. Because, let's face it, the previous generations that grew up, uh, well, we got hit by our parents, we, we had to deal with issues, Gen Z did not have any of that. Gen Z, for the absolute vast majority, had absolutely no tribulations, no troubles, they got everything that they wanted, and every time they had a problem, they got uh, taken to the psychiatrist. And obviously, if you, your, your only way of dealing with problems is by being taken to the psychiatrist, you're not going to be a functioning part of society because you literally are incapable of dealing with adversity or, you know, uh, differing opinions. True, but the reality that we actually grew into was far from a paradise, and the way we learned about it was like diving straight into the deep end. Just a few hundred years ago, the things people learned and knew about the world fit nearly together. People learned about the world from the people around them, and they built their own beliefs based entirely on their own small world. Structure and traditions were handed down to you and your community. And then Throw. it all got thrown into chaos. The Enlightenment and the Scientific Revolution destroyed the foundations of these religious and traditional worldviews. People's worldviews expanded, and their lives got more complicated. As religion lost its Throw. dominant role, ideology came in to replace it. As the world slowly modernized, Traditional communities struggled to survive, and traditional structures in society were replaced by ideological ones. People's allegiance and place shifted from their community to their nation state and the ideas they stood for. Even into the 20th century though, your view of the world could still remain consistent. Most people still had a clear path for their lives, and a clear way of thinking about life shared among the people they knew. The internet and access to mass media from across the world has blown all of this away. Instead of one belief system dominating our lives, there's thousands of false desires for us to pick and choose from. Instead of consistent shared experience, we've been exposed to millions of different people's objective views on life. By the time they're 12 years old, kids today have been plunged headfirst into the shifting sea of ideas. Ideas, millions of judgments and opinions about what's right or wrong. How you I don't even know if we can call it a shifting sea of ideas. That 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 gives way too much credence to whatever TikTok gives you. Should act, and what's either desirable or disgusting. It's easy for people to retreat into this world of information. The philosopher and sociologist Jean Baudrillard describes this. It's not really information. It's just self-soothing, constant self-soothing and uh, self-indulgence and things that make you happy even if for a moment that gets you addicted world is hyper reality a sort of world beyond worlds made up of meanings behind objects and people rather than what they actually are 
Things and concepts which exist in the real world like beauty, tragedy, virtue and vice all get warped and maximized. Beautiful people become impossibly perfect with computer editing and filters. Every crisis from around the world is suddenly right in front of you until it's quickly replaced by something True. else. The craziest outbursts and the most violent altercations rise to the top. These forces are most noticeable in people's sexual identity and preferences. Overstimulation and seeing all of your desires digitalized eventually gets boring for people. The more immersed in hyperreality they become, the harder it is for them to quench these desires. Everything becomes more and more extreme and detached from actual reality. Baudrillard describes this hyperreal world as being far more intense and ecstatic than the real world we live in. People find themselves fleeing the desert of the real for this digital world of symbols and subjectivity. But even if you don't get so caught up in hyperreality, it still changes the world around you. People's values and beliefs shift to reflect their ever-changing window into public opinion. Objects and people gain value according to how they're regarded in this hyperreality, as opposed to their actual value. They become symbols. Eventually, as we're seeing today, the hyperreal world begins to replace the real one entirely. If people act based on hyperreality and social status within it, then it starts to dominate life. Okay, I don't know if I actually agree with that. The fundamental problem of the modern world is that the world is still dominated by the majority of normal people. Normal people that I can relate, you can relate to, and whatnot. The problem is that if we're looking for entertainment, we are not looking for other normal people to entertain us. Well, most of the time at least. So, we're looking for these absolute clowns like Dylan Mulvaney and, you know, whatever else do we have here, drag queens and whatnot. We constantly look for that because that's different, that's more interesting. And when everyone is looking for that, obviously someone's going to take advantage of it and there's going to be companies that want to sell you those things. And when these companies uh, take advantage of that, well... You know what happens? On the internet, we suddenly, considering we go out less, we go, uh, we socialize less with people and whatnot. Now, if you go to a st uh, through a, a street of a normal city, you're still probably going to see mostly normal people in most majority places, except, you know, New York and, you know, Belgium and whatnot. You know, things like that. You're going to see mostly normal people except in a couple of places. That's because, again, still, most no, most people are normal people. But online? Online makes the false impression that everyone is an absolute degenerate, ins insanity-driven lunatic. Because those are the only people that get attention. Because they're different. And, well, that creates, uh, that creates a very twisted view of the world. Within it, then it starts to dominate life itself. Parts of life like fashion, which were already based in symbolism and underlying meanings, show the most severe effects of this. It's only in our hyper-real world that the brand Supreme could make a literal brick with their logo carved into it, yeah. which would then later sell online for over $1,000. Living in this world, and especially growing up in it, makes it much harder- I'm surprised. Am I the only one surprised that he didn't say one million, honestly? Am I the only one who's honestly surprised that he didn't say one million? Because I expected something bigger, honestly. Harder for people to find actual meaning. When everything only has value based on shifting opinions and an invisible social hierarchy, nothing has any permanent meaning behind it. This hyper reality becomes all the more tempting when you put down the phone and take a real look at today's world. Following the advice of the people who came before us doesn't work too well. The world has changed True. so much in recent history that the roadmap they followed just doesn't work anymore. True. Finding someone special is settling. Dude, finding someone special previously was relatively easy because you in reality were pretty much just in your local neighborhood city area or whatnot. Like, let's be real. How many of us could traverse without things like Google Maps, Ubers, and things like that? Not a lot. Not a lot. Because you actually needed to know where, you, uh, where you're going or re know how to read the map. I know how to read the map, but you know, still... Still, point being, reading a map is horrible. It's it's super annoying, it's super dumb, it's super easy to make a mistake when you're actually traversing with a car if you're reading a map. So, people were allocated to smaller places, aka, people had way less options. So, they tr people tried to find the best parts of each other. People tried to look at the more positive sides, because you... you for, you know, ev uh, for every person who previously had, let's say, a 20 options for their future uh, future love interest, 
Nowadays, you have 10,000 options because of things like Tinder, social meetings, blah, blah, blahs, and things like that. And the iron, uh, ironic part is most people who get married get married through uh, jobs, finding someone in their job because they spend a lot of time with these people, uh, through friend groups, through fam uh, family members and uh, family groups who introduce them to other people like this. You know, s still... We have more options, but uh, but in a sense, mo most people get married and start families and whatnot through the old ways of doing things, through friend groups, through people that live near you, through people you work with, and things like that, which is crazy. Settling down, buying a home, and having children just isn't feasible for most people. And I don't probably need to even say anything about buying a home. <sighs> 40 years, uh, 40, year, uh, 40 years ago, peop uh, people were freshly 19 and they could start a uh, start family, have two kids, a wife, work one single normal 9 to 5 job with no overtime and buy a house with three bedrooms. Okay, that was the old times. Now, now, now you can't rent... <laughs> Now you can't find some. Uh, no, now most people can't find uh, a, a single, a single, a single room apartment to rent for, uh, you know, not half the price of uh, of their salary, let alone get a house or provide for a family on their own. Impossible. People and the root of the problem is economic. When you look at what it takes to reach these integral parts of life today, compared to 20 or 50 years ago, it puts it all into perspective. Let's start with the US. Here's the home price to median household income ratio over time. It measures how many years it would take, saving all the money the average American household earns to buy a family home. From 1965 to 2000, oh, it by hovered the way. around 3.5 to 4.5, a healthy ratio that meant the homes were usually within the reach for most people, which isn't the case today at all. After years of stagnating wages, greedy bankers playing the system and a global pandemic, we're closing in on eight. It would take eight years of wages to buy just one home. The UK is even worse off on average. They blew past eight years in 2015. That's not even true, I think, by the way, for the US. I don't know about the UK. Who cares about the UK? Um, is it? I, I wonder what kind of homes they're talking about. Because the average person in the US, if I'm not mistaken, makes roughly like 40k a year. And the average house is probably, you know, or even probably buying a flat with two, two, two bedrooms is probably still roughly, you know, 400-ish K. So that's not eight years. That's more like 10 years. And keep in mind, this is 10 years of never spending a dime of your income. So the reality is much, much worse than this is showing because how much of your income you're currently able to save. Not a lot. Even if you're trying really hard, that's probably not a lot. Now it would take nine years of wages to buy one house. In the big cities, it's even worse. To buy the average home in LA and comfortably pay the mortgage, you need to make over $220,000. In New York, the median house price is equivalent to over 10 years of income for the average household. A London family would need a staggering 16 years of uninterrupted wages to buy a house outright. The city's... Well, some dude that's gonna probably stab your kid gets it for free. Nice. ...that young people move to for work, and high wages end up being far harder to get a foothold in. And all of this is so important because owning a home is the foundation for a traditional life. Living paycheck to paycheck and paying off someone else's mortgage means there's barely a safety net at all. It's dangerous for people to live their lives because it's just too expensive in our society. Adding in childcare costs makes it clear why very few people are even having children anymore. Is it really a surprise the West is facing a giant population collapse? Of course, it isn't just housing here. Inflation has meant that everything's gotten so much more expensive. Corporate profiteering and price gouging haven't helped either. But as everything has gotten more expensive, wages have continued to stagnate for most. Since 1979, the bottom 90% of the US saw their income rise by around 24% adjusting for inflation. Meanwhile, it doubled for the top 1% of the country. Hyperreality has distracted people from this. They still know it's happening. Everyone's feeling the effects. But with the constant assault of useless information you're powerless to do anything about, it just gets swallowed up by the constant cycle. It acts as a release valve for people's rightful outrage. Real anger and emotions that would have been converted into real action end up in cyberspace instead. There they join the billions of other opinions and fade away into the background noise. Things go by so fast we're unable to process them. Humans just not built to deal with so much at once. And as a result, 
hyperreality all seems like a blur, like you're traveling through it all so fast that you only get a sense of the underlying emotions. The algorithms manipulate this further and push content that makes people feel self-conscious or negative to the top. It doesn't help that we're going through a global crisis right now. The bringing of a third world war, economic catastrophe, the world's a mess. Ah, classics. Cla classics so, so played out now. I'm, I'm, ver I, no one even cares to, uh, to talk about World War Three at this point. It's like, it's, it, it, dude, happen or don't, like, pick one, not just constantly try to be talked about, okay? and Gen Z knows they're the ones who are going to have to clean it all up. And so applying Baudrillard's work to our world today illuminates- How is Gen Z going to clean anything up if they can barely uh, wipe their own ass? Reasons behind how absurd and unreal it can all seem. The replacement of reality with hyperreality shifted the focus of everything to social status. Money is a good example. Generally, people's wages and the amount of money they earned was linked to the quality of their labor and how productive they were. Today, how much you earn is entirely based on your social status within the system. It's been to the benefit of both CEOs and the top OnlyFans models. They both earn their money not through the quality of their work or what they produce, but through their position at the top of the hierarchy. The focus on speculative value? True. But again, let's ask yourself this. Is it worth doing OF and dying alone? Or having a kid who's... Uh, hey, hey. As one o o OF model said this. Hey, hey. If my kid is gonna cry and uh, cry about his mom doing OF, at least he's gonna cry in a Ferrari. Your kid's gonna off himself in a Ferrari. As opposed to real value, as they did scam artists and snake oil salesmen as well. It's only in our modern world that Sam Bankman Fried nice. could convince top hedge funds and millions of people to invest in a Ponzi scheme. The result of all of this is a society which puts far more focus on the optics of equality whilst becoming even more rigidly ordered and stratified. Movement up the ladder becomes even harder despite the appearance of a constant march towards a more liberal society. So how do you survive in a world like this? Well, there's a few different routes people take. Lots of people detach entirely, completely leaving the desert of the real and retreating entirely into hyper-reality. It isn't an active choice, of course. The passive nature of Matrix consumption just goes hand in hand with the inaction of depression. Simple things like exercise and living life become harder and harder to do. As you sink into these low levels, the nasty loop is that doing these things is what you need in the first place to break you out, but the more depressed someone is, the more difficult they become. There isn't one single cure to this, or some collection of words that will solve it. Everyone's journey is their own, and what people do have is their own personal strength and the people around them. Finding a natural reason to break free and carry on is completely different though. It's something philosophers have tried to solve for thousands of years, with middling results. Today, there's a few general approaches people try to use to find some sort of meaning. One approach has been championed by people like Andrew Tate to embrace hyperreality to the fullest. If social status is all that matters, then why not give in and make it the meaning behind your life as well? Andrew Tate calls this breaking out of the matrix. But really, it's more similar to what Cypher- Is he? Is he? Is, is that actually what he's doing? I mean, I, I, I think his message is something about reality, you know, but... Huh? did in the film the neo when he portrayed neo and decided to go back into the matrix he represented embracing hyper reality he accepted that even if the steak he was eating and the life he was living was fake and meaningless he it's might still as well enjoy the pleasures of it building social status buying bugattis living in dubai having empty encounters with multiple women might sound like a 15 year old boy's dream life but in reality that life never existed in the first place is an idealized image with little basis in true reality expressed through heavily edited snippets and highlights and even if you could live a life like that it wouldn't add any real meaning to your life you have no soul you have no consciousness you're not connected to any deeper purpose with inside of you there will always be a faster and more expensive car to buy or a larger mansion to own treating everything and everyone like an object of social status also justifies awful and abusive behavior any belief system that reduces people into something else it never hollow but very fun though Inevitably leads to tragedy. Whilst embracing hyperreality isn't the answer, rejecting it completely isn't either. It would sound ideal to just take your loved ones and go live in a cabin somewhere. You'd be free to live an authentic life in nature, but it just isn't very realistic. Most people can't afford to just leave society, and even if they can, True. it's hard to convince others to join you. And by cutting out a community, you're cutting out one of the most important needs in Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Deleting social media might be a less drastic solution. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is complete BS, by the way. No. Not gonna, uh, uh, n I'm not gonna lie. Self, okay. Psychology time, boys. In all my practices, in all my absolute everything, 
none of this shit matters as much as only one human emotion matters. Every human wants to feel justified and wants to feel accepted and right. That is it. And all of these three things, by the way, that I just named are one thing in reality. It's just someone saying yes and listening to you. The, the, nothing in this pyramid, nothing in anything in life as much as I have experimented and tried these things, even comes close to that. As long as you can satisfy that most b brazen, well, not brazen, well, it is brazen, you know, this brazen, most primal need of a human, you can pretty much do whatever you want with them. Nothing else matters compared to that. Because that encompasses pretty much everything a human is. A need. In Maslow's hierarchy of needs, deleting social media might be a less drastic solution, but you'll still be living in a hyper-real society, detaching from life and society. And by the way, that's why social media is so, uh, so good. Because people getting even 10 likes means that someone's agreeing with you, someone likes you, someone thinks that what you said was good, you know? Again, it, it, it completely governs everything. In these ways, it might be the right option for some. Maslow's whatever can go suck it. Brothers, it's life denying. It's a decision born out of the fear of suffering what society has become. Would it not be better to work within society and at least try and make it a bit better, rather than just leaving it to the rest of the world? When the world faced a similar crisis of meaning 150 years ago, Nietzsche saw that the only escape from nihilism was to create your own values. They can't be based in hyperreality, and it's created a collection of other people's experiences. The only thing that actually exists is your own viewpoint and your own perspective. That world is the only one you have even limited control over. Nietzsche believed that the highest values we can create come from the innate human- Nietzsche. What the hell? Will to power. And Isn't it Nietzsche? I always- I- I have never talked to anyone who uh, I, I'm 100% knows how to pronounce his name, but I thought it's Nietzsche. What he meant by this is still up for debate, Nietzsche. but it doesn't mean simply forcing everything and everyone into submission. Instead, one interpretation of this will to power is how well you can shape the world around you. To have power in your life, the better you can make it, and the more it suits your own personal purposes, the more power you have. Hmm. To analyze everything you read here or see that could impact your decisions, think about the motivations behind the person saying it. Decide whether it aligns with your own personal- Don't always think about every, uh, every meaning behind everything. You can be smart, but it's never gonna change. Sometimes it's gonna feel real good and real fun to just do stupid crap because, you know, you wanna change. The world and whether it can make it better. If it can, embrace it and see what happens. If not, discard it. The world is going through a crisis and it'll need strong, principled people to see it through. The only thing you can do though is worry about your own world and the people around you. The rest is up to fate. It's times of crises that breed strong people. Make sure you're one of them. True. But if you're interested in really fun- That was a pretty good video. I kinda liked it. That was our boy Moon. Uh, he has an outro screen. Why isn't showing up? Strange. Anyway, that was a Moon. Good stuff. Anyway, this was Kuzerson. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, add already, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.